Hello, hello, hello. It's Lily and Riki here from Parent Support Network coming in today with episode, jeepers, what episode are we up to? 34, I think, of Parent Support Network TV. Hope you are doing awesomely well. Today, I am coming in with a topic that is very close to my heart, um, that is ADHD. Of course, those of you who know our story know that um, our youngest son was diagnosed with ADHD and ODD along with childhood depression when he was just a toddler. But I guess ADHD is the condition um, that most people have heard of. So for those of you who don't know, ADHD, uh, according to the DSM, the Diagnostical Statistical Manual, stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I myself, however, have come up with another acronym, which I much more prefer. Uh, so for somebody who has the... Um, the symptoms of or the um, yeah the challenges that 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 are associated with ADHD I would prefer to call them amazing driven hyper focused determination so they are people with amazing driven hyper focused determination um, because let's face it we don't really want to see our kids as having a deficit or for that matter having a disorder so I'm not really sure where this is going to go today I have um, been listening over the last weeks to um, an amazing amount of podcasts on ADHD I think I've gone beyond 50 um, 50 episodes which predominantly are an hour plus so some of them well over an hour so I've probably listened to 60 to 70 hours of information on ADHD which I'm thoroughly enjoying from amazing people like Howard Glasser, who's the founder of Nurtured Heart Approach and, of course, uh, worked with predominantly with children with ADHD when he uh, came up with the Nurtured Heart Approach 30 years ago. Uh, Gabor Mate, who is a, a specialist in, um, he's a doctor, but a specialist in trauma and stress and what that causes um, on the body, and he has a huge interest in children's health and ADHD. Peter Bregan who is a child uh, psychiatrist um, who has a very beautiful holistic view of, um, of this so-called so -called disorder. Dr. Bruce Lipton, of course, uh, who is amazing as well, and a bunch of other people, like so many people, I don't think I could name them all. But my question, and the question has come up for me over the years because of our own our son's diagnosis, but... The, um, the amazing host of the, um, of the ADHD is over podcast uh, has posed this question many times, you know, is it or should it be a disorder or is it a disorder and we should we be labelling our children with a disorder? So what is a disorder? Um, so according to um, the, a definition of a medical disorder, it is a disturbance of normal functioning of the mind or body. So these disorders may be caused by genetic factors, disease or trauma. And if you believe what uh, um, all of those people I've just shared with you believe, then they believe it's due more to trauma and stress rather than genetic factors. So there could be a genetic uh, predisposition um, to um, the, the symptoms of, I guess, but it's not so much uh, seen as a genetic um, thing rather than perhaps epigenetic, so a result of uh, our behaviours and our environment. Uh, is it a disease? Hmm, interesting. I know that when our son was first diagnosed and, um, you know, we saw it as, and I didn't know much about ADHD, I'm talking about 25 plus years ago, I had heard of it because I was a teacher and I was aware, you know, of, of basically what ADHD meant. But when I when our son was diagnosed and I realised, hey, this is a disorder, our son has actually been diagnosed with a mental health disorder, which goes on his permanent record, by the way, and um, not that it bothers him, but it may, you know, influence, um, you know, jobs or, or careers that he might have wanted to, to get into because he has this mental disorder. Um, it's also looked at as a disorder is a functional abnormality or disturbance. 
Um, a disorder is a mental or physical illness which prevents part of your body from working properly. So I don't know about you, but I wasn't really keen on thinking of my child like that or actually more importantly, having him think about himself like that, that he is in some way disordered, you know, that he has an abnormality or that his body isn't working properly, his brain isn't working properly. I didn't like the idea of that. Yes, I'll admit perhaps his brain works differently from other people's brains. Um, perhaps he learns in a different way. Perhaps he takes information in in a different way. Perhaps he has a different way of communicating and relationshiping than other kids, but a disorder, a disease, um, that just didn't sit right with me at all. So this morning, I actually contacted my beautiful friend, Shelley Wilkins, who is the, um, the National Director of CCHR, the Citizens Commission on Human Rights here in Australia. And it's been her absolute passion for decades now to, to find out and to educate about what's really going on with mental disorders. So not just uh, ADHD in children, but all sorts of mental disorders. But she has, of course, a huge passion for children. So I'm just going to uh, share some of the things that, um, and, and I printed off a whole bunch of pieces of paper from some stuff that she sent me, and I probably need five hours to go through all of that, but just some of the key findings. Um, and I tried to base um, the, these findings um, on us in Australia because things are a little bit different in America. So key findings, ADHD affects approximately 281,200 children and adolescents aged 0 to 19. The total cost of ADHD in Australia in 2019 is, get this, $20.42 billion. <laughs> um, the most recent results from the Global Burden of Disease study show that the prevalence of ADHD in Australia is 4.1% in children aged 0 to 14. Now, I found statistics that say 1 in 20 um, up to one in 20. And I also even found something that said between one in three and one in four children are being treated in mm -hmm. Australia for ADHD. So how will we ever really know mm -hmm. that actual, um, the true, that 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 figure? Oh, sorry, I just put my hands up. Um, we'll probably never really, really know the exact figure. And a lot of those statistics are based on, you know, kids that have been prescribed and diagnosed, et cetera. So there's probably, you know, a bunch of kids out there who are getting around, who are not coping in various ways, but have not been diagnosed. So ADHD, um, one of the things I read says it's characterized by persistent patterns of inattentive, impulsive, and sometimes hyperactive behavior frequently accompanied by emotional regulation challenges. So this was definitely the case with my son. So I remember when he was first diagnosed, we actually went and purchased a DSM, a, a, a Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And we actually looked up ADHD and ODD to see what the actual criteria were to be diagnosed. And in total transparency, when I read them, I felt like, yes, I could tick all of those boxes. But, you know, I still kept going back to, yes, he was having these challenges, but is it a disorder? Is it a disease? And does it warrant um, being uh, medicated um, with very, very toxic medications? So um, uh, it's actually a $20 billion um, a cost for ADHD in Australia. Um, it affects more than 800,000 Australians. And um, what else is there? Yeah, it estimates that the social and economic impacts of the neurodevelopmental disorder are around 20 billion per year. But that poses another question. Is it a neurodevelopmental disorder or is it just a set of behaviours that children exhibit because of various circumstances? Now, a lot of people I've been listening to uh, say there's a big link between the behaviours that children are displaying who are being diagnosed with ADHD and stress and trauma. And I talked about this in my last episode, didn't I, of how I felt that um, 
uh, Caleb's stress um, and trauma at birth, he was actually put on what the, the doctors told us was a stress monitor when he uh, when I was in labor so he was born in a very stressful uh, and traumatic way and I believe that played a part in his um, behaviors that were displayed in very early childhood that um, the, the professionals the medical professionals diagnosed as ADHD ODD in childhood depression so I'm no expert. I'm definitely not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist or a psychiatrist. But of course, it has been an area of huge interest for me. And being, you know, a parent advocate of, you know, looking at these um, diagnoses, I suppose, and looking at how we can help our children in a more holistic way rather than medicating. Um, some of the the stats that that Shelley sent through to me from. Um, from CCHR were actually alarming. So these are just Australian statistics. So uh, in 2013, there were a total of 112,605 patients um, who were prescribed ADHD medis medicines. Um, um, so that's 112,605 in 2013. In 2020, that escalated to 255,208 so that's more than 100%. That's more than double, um, well and truly more than double um, in those uh, seven years. Uh, the highest category or the, the, area, the ages with the highest number of um, medicines, ADHD medicines um, that were prescribed was for six to 12-year-old males. So in 2013, 38,216 males were treated with PBS listed ADH medicines. By the way, that number could be more because PBS are just the public, you know, listed um, um, medicines that you can claim. And there are other medicines that, or drugs, I prefer to call them, <laughs> the medicines that, um, because they're, they're, they're predominantly scheduled to drugs, right? So, you know, I, I think of medicine, you know, like a cough medicine or an aspirin or something, not a, a scheduled two drug. Um, but anyway, that's another story for another day. So yeah, 38,000 in 2013 um, boys, six to 12 and 81,000, um, in 2020 so that that's close to a threefold you know two and a half plus fold uh, increase under six males so our son was first diagnosed just um, prior to age four or around age four so he would come into that category 2013 there were 2226 prescriptions keeping in mind we wouldn't be one of these statistics because we did not um, um, say yes to that we did not um, fulfill um, when when the, uh, when a diagnosis and medication was recommended we said no thank you so we wouldn't even be one of those statistics uh, that has um, more than doubled or around doubled in 2020 at 4395 so that's for under six-year-olds so boys are definitely um, diagnosed um, a lot more than girls. Um, for example, in the less than six-year-olds um, in 2020, 4,395 boys compared to 1,055 girls. So um, yeah, and the and the, the category um, in 2020, um, six to 12-year-old males, 81,000, um, 13 to 18-year-old males, 39 or nearly 40,000. And um, then, yeah, total patients, 255,000. And that was an 18% increase in 2020 from 2019. And 2019 had a 16% increase from 2018, which had a 14% increase from the prior year, 11% increase from the prior year, 11%, 11%, and 6%. So why is it growing so, so much? Why is, you know, why are we needing to prescribe so many of these, these drugs? Um, to our children. Um, it's quite alarming. Um, I might have one clue as to why. Um, the, um, um, here's another stat from Shelley from on the CCHR. So in the patient group zero to 16, the PBS um, benefits that were prescribed um, were to the value of, are you ready for this? This is just in Australia. Um, and this is... Um, 
January, so this is uh, 1st of January 2019 to the 31st of December 2019. So for the year of 2019, 50, now let me make sure there's a lot of numbers here, 54 million. $342,358 dollars on these drugs were spent through PBS, through the, um, through the um, prescription system there. That is a lot of money. Um, and that might be a little bit of a clue as to why, you know, these medications are being prescribed so easily and so readily. It's interesting because actually when I went to... Um, to one of the sites uh, when I Googled because I actually was listening to one of the podcasts yesterday by Dr. Leonard Sachs, who's written one of his books is called Boys Adrift. He actually said that um, in America, one in 10 uh, or 10 percent of kids in America, that's a heck of a lot, um, have been diagnosed with ADHD, but he believes that the true diagnosis should be one percent or less because a lot of the other um, reasons that kids are being diagnosed with ADHD uh, because of a whole bunch of other, you know, behavioural reasons. Uh, in Australia, the stats I've read anywhere from one in 20, and then I did read somewhere from one in three to four, which is a huge difference, isn't it? So I don't know what that real number is, but um, the stats that I got from CCHR have been, um, have been got you know, from a, a, um, a reliable source, of course, and sometimes they have to put in for, um, what's that called again, when they have to um, pay money to Privacy Act to actually find out actual information. So um, that might be one of those reasons there. So there's a lot of kids being prescribed, a lot of kids being diagnosed, a lot of kids being prescribed, and a lot of um, medication slash drugs being recommended. Um, it's 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 bad enough in Australia in in the states it's really really bad according to you know all of these podcasts that I've been listening to <clears throat> so that ponders a question you know if ADHD is not a disease is not a disorder what is it <laughs> you know what is it Usually when we think of a disease, it's something we can see. It's something we can see with a test or, you know, it's a tumour that we can see or it's a <clears throat> something that we can see through a blood test, et cetera. But there, I don't believe there are any such tests for ADHD. They're more um, just, you know, chatting to your doctor or your uh, counsellor or your psychiatrist or psychologist and, and then ticking the boxes and saying, yes, 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 they have these um, various... Um, <clears throat> symptoms and I know when we had our son diagnosed we didn't choose to have him diagnosed but when they decided to diagnose him uh, that that's all it was it was just ticking the boxes it was just us you know telling them that yes he was hyperactive yes he was inattentive yes he was defiant you know and all of those things and they go okay well then he's ADHD then he's ODD here's the medication to to rectify it <clears throat> excuse me but the more I research this and the more I listen to experts who are, I guess, sitting on the side of the fence who are not necessarily just let's just medicate, diagnose and medicate. So those, those um, professionals who are looking outside of that box, um, <clears throat> they believe that a lot of the um, kids who are being diagnosed are just showing various behaviours due to a bunch of different reasons. So some of those reasons could be, you know, stress or trauma at birth or in early childhood. And that's what I put it down to for our son. Um, we didn't have any kind of, you know, real stress and trauma in the home as such, but he was stressed and traumatized um, because of his birth and um, because of um, drugs that were given to, hit, to me when I had a migraine, which I think was a an, an effect and I always did think that but I just didn't put it down to stress and trauma as such I put it just down to the you know the side effects of, of the medication uh, it could be due to uh, some sort of dysfunction in the home you know the parents are fighting arguing all the time mum and dad are unhappy they could be there could be a pending separation or divorce which is very traumatizing and very stressful for children 
you know, if parents are unhappy, kids are unhappy. It's just a natural thing, right? And of course, kids go off to school. Let's just say mum and dad are fighting at home and there's a lot of yelling and screaming and kids are feeling, you know, for their parents and why don't mum and dad love each other? And perhaps they're not feeling the love because mum and dad aren't feeling good about themselves. And then, of course, they go to school and they're going to be inattentive. They're not going to be listening. They're not going to be concentrating. They might actually display some behaviors that they normally wouldn't display right um, and sometimes they can be ongoing when kids are traumatized and stressed in this way it could just be that they're in an environment where they don't feel safe uh, there could be a lack of nurture you know they might not have that loving nurture that they really desire as human beings um, from from their parents it could as I said be a you know a marriage breakdown it could be you know um, violence of, of some sort or aggression and it could just be that the kid doesn't like school, right? You know, they're not listening or they're not attentive because they don't like school. They don't like what the teacher's teaching, perhaps. <clears throat> they don't like the way the teacher's teaching. Like not all of us can sit still in our chairs for an hour, an hour and a half at a time and just listen and be quiet and put our heads down and do our work. We all learn in different ways. Some of us need to move around more. Some of us are more kinesthetic or audible learners you know some of us you know uh, we learned in different ways our brains do work differently our brains are not all the same but that does not mean we have a disorder or a disease so um you know I just wanted to to share some of that today I've probably been all over the place a little bit but it's something that has just really been hitting home with me lately as I'm learning <coughs> more and listening to more professionals and, and I think for me, the biggest issue with um, diagnosing and labelling our children is the psychological effect on them, having them think that they're not, you know, right or they're not, you know, they're not normal, whatever normal is, but, you know, that they have some sort of disorder and that can place a lot of psychological stress on the kids as well and feelings of not being good enough, not being the same as, you know, being... Um, you know dysfunctional or dis you know just not being normal in their eyes as such so yeah it's a lot to think about isn't it so I think um, I'd, I'd love to actually I will invite my beautiful friend Shelly so Shelly I'll send you this recording and I'm going to ask you to come and jump on a um, TV TV episode one day um, as soon as you can to talk a little bit more about ADHD what it is you know, a little bit more about the med the diagnosing of and the medicating of, because I know Shelley can reel all this stuff off um, um, because it's something she deals with daily. But I just thought I'd put it out as a little bit of food for thought today. So whether you already have a child diagnosed, and it might not just be ADHD, it could be something else because there are a myriad of things that kids get diagnosed with today, particularly on that spectrum, the ASD spectrum, autistic spectrum disorder. So um, once again, they're calling it a disorder, right? So it could be ADHD, it could be ODD, it could be Asperger's autism and, you know, all of the other myriad of, um, of, of diagnoses that are made on, on our children today. So just some food for thought to think about, you know, is your child disordered or are they just behaving in a certain way because of other stimuli because of epigenetics because of environment and because of behavior so that's really something I think that we should all be thinking about um, and no matter what decision we make for our children because of course as parents we all make the decision that we think is the best decision for our children whatever decision we make just make sure that we do our due diligence and we do our research and don't just take at face value what a professional or many professionals tell us because we had professional after professional tell us that um, our son had this disorder and that he needed to be medicated but we choose not we chose not to take that on board and we did a whole bunch more research for ourselves and we came up with you know alternate um, ways of, of, of assisting and helping him over the years so that's it from me today. That went really, really quickly. Um, I hope you got something from it. Please do pop in, in the chat box if you got some value from that or, you know, if it's maybe even had you, you know, think about um, diagnosis and, and medicating of our children and, and what that label means for our children. 
Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that, that's it from me, Lily and Riki, um, Parenting Strategists from Parent Support Network, equipping parents to enjoy happy and healthy children and relationships on purpose. Bye for now.